what I wanted to do really in this presentation was to give um, a bit of a snapshot of the work that I'm doing within my fellowship called the Living Textile Interface. And I think um, it's important to stress that I see my fellowship as really a series of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary collaborations. So there's really lots of people involved in all these projects, as you will see. Um, so briefly, my background, I trained as a textile designer, a knit specialist uh, with a particular interest in knitted architecture. And why I wanted to show this slide was just really to emphasize that in my work, I think that the artifacts become part of the expression of the idea, but actually the making process is absolutely critical to the thinking that goes on behind the research that I've done. And this really just shows a series of collaborations with um, Dr. Elizabeth Gaston, who I work really closely with, um, focusing on working with different groups for different applications using knitting across different scales. So I'm positioning my um, fellowship firmly between the biological scale and the building scale. And my approach is that textiles offer a key bioassembly strategy for the fabrication of a new suite of bioengineered materials for the built environment. And why do I say this? I say this because textiles represent a key method to work across scales. And I think Bastian covered this um, information very elegantly this morning. And I guess what I'd add is that from my perspective, in addition to this kind of hierarchical system, there's also a programming potential of knitting where the, sophisticated, the sophistication of the technology enables us to um, kind of hyper specify the material down to the individual stitch so you're able to move between 2d and 3d and work with multiple materials on this using this technology and what that opens up is this huge area of living textiles where we move from the fiber level up to the fabric the form and the fi finishing techniques so that's a vast set of parameters and to try and negotiate those, this expansive field, I've got three themes that I'm working with in my um, research. And I, as I present these individual projects, I think um, the work moves across these themes. However, I think what's critical to all of them is the process of design research and ex engaging with material experimentation. So my work always starts, always tends to start with bio-inspiration. And these are just some photographs I took in my own garden. Um, thinking about how nature builds with fibrous materials. So thinking about spiders webs and those amazing tension structures, and then this kind of structural integrity gained through bundling to joining mechanisms that plants um, use kind of knotting approaches to attach themselves to um, kind of a more, uh, another structure. So this is kind of wealth of inspiration just on our doorstep from a design point of view. And what, pull, what I pull out from that bio-inspiration is really this set of models that I've um, worked with previously and I continue to work with it within my research. So bio-inspiration and biomimicry being kind of the fundamental principle. And then within that, looking at models of sensing, of growth, um, and taking those through into modeling with textiles. And I think plants in particular have been incredibly inspiring for me. Um, and I suppose it's because both Plants and textiles are composed at their kind of basic level from fibres, which are kind of exposed to this hierarchical structuring to enable the functional properties that um, you see in them. So there's this kind of really interesting, these interesting principles that transfer across. So moving from nature as inspiration and moving into working with living microorganisms and textiles, I think the questions that um, we're asking of both of these material systems and the living materials um, is quite different. And so I started working with mycelium and I was thinking initially about how a textile scaffold could direct the growth of mycelium in the assembly of biocomposite. And I think what started this was again something that was brought up by Bastian this morning, that microorganisms require this source of nutrition. And maybe that's um, derived from the local environment or provided through some kind of scaffolding system. And as textiles are known for their moisture properties, for their ability to wick moisture, to move moisture through a system, it seemed like quite an interesting place to start with um, the thinking. And so what I started doing was looking at these kind of textile scaffolds, introducing a mycelium, which here was uh, an oyster mushroom mycelium, to different fabric structures to see how the material would grow and to try and direct that growth or guide that growth, but ultimately to see how those two material systems work together. And what you see here is that the floats of yarn have um, guided the growth of the mycelium, but also enabled the mycelium to produce this kind of non-woven web 
um, kind of integrated into the textile itself. And looking more closely at this, um, I think what's really interesting is to see how the hyphae from the mycelium are beginning to wrap themselves around these linen yarns to establish this biotextile um, composite. And the image really shows this wrapping. It shows also how the direction of the hyphae move to try and engage with the nutrient supply in the textile in order to stabilize the fabric as well. And so you're getting this lovely um, possibility to tailor the direction of growth or to encourage the direction of growth within um, the web formation. And this has stayed at quite an experimental stage. Um, so these micro assemblies really explore scale, texture, flexibility, the adhesion of um, the mycelium on the textile substrate. Just um, and then also exploring different technologies. So from kind of hand knitting and unconventional processes right up to this CNC, very um, digitally controlled um, knit system. And I just want to stop for a moment to introduce a project which hopefully some of you are able to see at lunchtime, which is a PhD student, Romy Kaiser, whose work aims to establish knitted textiles as a bioassembly method for the construction industry. And I think what's particularly interesting about this framework is that it specifies providing, assembling and holding as kind of the design criteria as a framework to really think about how she can negotiate biomaterials and construction processes and what the what the relationship between those living organisms and the processes might be. And her ambition really is to extend the reach of textiles through biofabrication and through analysis of how living textiles can enhance low impact design strategies. So another project I've been very keenly involved in this year is actually a project you heard about yesterday. So it's the Fibre Highways project, which is all about um, considering how um, we can, we can look at the directional movement and dispersal of microbes on a range of natural and synthetic fibers, actually to enhance hydrocarbon de degradation. So in this work, we're looking at quite a specific application. I'm not gonna talk about the science because um, that was covered by um, the PI on the project, Angie Sherry from Northumbria in quite a lot of detail yesterday. But I did think it might be interesting to look at some of the design approaches that I've been um, working on in, in this project. So what we've been, what we've been looking at is how um, bacteria works alongside, um, firstly, fungal my, um, mycelium, and secondly, alongside fibers. Um, and actually, I think the, it's really interesting to think about this micro scale that we're working at. So here you can see this image of a wool fiber and you can see the scales on the fiber. And within the scales on the fiber, you can see these communities of bacteria. Um, and I think for me as a designer, what's fascinating is how we're moving across this huge scale um, with this work and really seeing it as both the design challenge, but also a design opportunity. And so there have been two key questions central to the design exploration. Um, firstly, how can textiles empower communities of microorganisms to cleanse polluted environments? And in that way, the intention of the project is really to see if we can um, develop a bit of a symbiotic relationship and we can use traditional textile methods such as looking at yarn quality, fiber type, um, fabric structure to enhance remediation in situ. And then the second way we've been looking at it is to really think about how we can use microorganisms to transform knitted fabric properties to enhance remediation. And here we're looking at programmable textile systems. So these are fabrics that are engineered to, um, to move in response to moisture with the intention that we can seed environments, um, that they'll be attracted to that uh, moisture source and the bacteria will obviously be within these structures and able to, um, to kind of really get to where they need to, to, to start to work on degrading, um, degrading the source, so degrading the hydrocarbons. And so we've been looking at different approaches, how we can lock um, fabric structures into a core or how we can work between fibres and fabrics, but, but really with this principle of working between bacteria and knitted fabric to it, kind of explore and engineer the best to the the best points of both both um, systems and I think um, what fibre highways touches on is kind of the vast opportunity for living textiles and I have to say after 
participating in the whole day today, I've just been kind of overwhelmed by the um, amount of textiles within all the presentations. Um, and I think textiles are this unique material system which enables us to engage with a variety of contexts and applications. And then I just wanted to highlight the work of another PhD student who's focusing on a fascinating aspect of living textiles in her research, the materiality of well-being. And this is an investigation into textiles as living structures, so structures that nurture the well-being of human and more than human inhabitants in the built environment. And what she's doing is exploring novel forms of interspecies interaction through living textiles. And actually, she's hoping to develop scent based sense and response systems, which I think is really interesting from a design perspective to think of these alternative um, sensing and response, response systems when we're working with um, human and non human um, systems. So the last project that I just wanted to briefly um, introduce to you, and I feel I've gone extremely fast through all my talk, but I did want to just highlight this project before um, I finished, is the Bionit prototype. And so this is um, one of the prototypes that's being developed for, H, um, for the hub for biotechnology in the built environments, OHM, which is the experimental living building. And what we're doing with this prototype is really trying to challenge the scale and the functionality of a textile biocomposite using knitting at the building scale. Um, and as you can see from this slide, we've, well, first of all, we've got this incredible team of researchers working on the project, um, kind of covering multiple areas of expertise, which is very exciting. And the concepts, the uh, modeling on here has been done by Armand, which um, is just yeah, fascinating. And we've got these fabulous um, concepts that have come through biomimicry that have been led by Emily. So we've started with bioinspiration from plant growth strategies. And really what these images are doing are saying, are asking the question of whether we're being inspired by trees, by parasitic plants, by climbing plants. What are these models from nature that we're trying to explore within the very specific site that we're looking at? And then the prototype investigates how the tunable and structural qualities of knitted fabric can combine and support the growth of two living microorganisms, both bacteria, um, sorry, both mycelium and also um, bacterial cellulose. So we're bringing together mul multiple um, living materials in this, um, in this uh, prototype, which I think is really exciting. So from a... Um, Within the composite, knitting creates this 3D tension scaffold. We've got mycelium, which creates strength and stiffness and variable stiffness because we're going to be exploring lots of different scales. And then bacterial cellulose, which really enables the translucency and transforms those qualities. And if you have, if you can see in the images in the middle, um, Aileen's work is really exciting because what she's doing is she's starting to bring these different materials together with living organisms so she's bringing together the textile substrate with mycelium and bacterial cellulose so we're really interested to see how these materials are going to come together with knit hosting to borrow Romy's term both the mycelium and the bacterial cellulose and from a knit, pers knit perspective I think um Again, something that Bastian talked in a lot of depth about this morning is the idea of scaling up a knitted textile. And when you work with industrial textiles, you tend to work with very um, fine fabrics at a very fine gauge. But what we're doing in this prototype is really challenging that scale. So we're working at um, a kind of a very large scale in terms of the fibers that we're, uh, the bundles of fibers and yarns that we're gonna to bring to the prototype all the way up to the fine scale industrial knitting using the CNC knit technologies. So just to give you a sneak peek of what we're hoping to be developing for the rest of the year, really what we're hoping to achieve is a habitable space constructed within the OM. And we, we see it as this really exciting opportunity to bring um, a range of living materials together using knit as kind of a scaffold, a nutrient supply um, and, uh, um, and a structuring component. So just to finish off, um, I just I kind, of want to, kind of wanted to come back to the themes and try and express how um, these three themes come together within the work that I've been doing or that we've been doing, because it's all collaborations, um, really thinking about how bioinspiration can inspire the models um, I'm working with, that we can use textiles very directly to scaffold and to produce scaffolds for um, growth, for nutrition. 
and with the ultimate goal to try and produce a living sensing interface that can actually work between these two sections, these two scales of biology and building. And in the same way as any craft, it's critical, I think, that we respect and learn from the materials that we're working with to try and develop a skill in um, guiding the growth of these materials to try and almost tease out the potential of the living materials to understand what the meaning could be in within the context of kind of the sustainable building section. And I so think the research at the moment is quite exploratory, um, but I think we will be able to, through these prototypes and these probes that I've been developing this year, or we've been developing this year, we can really think about how we can impact um, sustainable and regenerative strategies for the built environment. Thank you. <laughs>